Welcome to this online training on sharing facilities and spaces within your community to create more opportunities for people to be physically active. My name is Michael Canters. I'm a professor in the Department of Parks, Recreation and Tourism Management at NC State University. And I'm going to be your host for this training and hopefully something that you'll not only learn something from, but you'll enjoy going through as well. The purpose of this online training is first to introduce you to the concept of shared use and then we're going to start walking you through the steps of how to make it happen within your community. We're going to look at some of the common barriers and how to overcome them and we're going to give you some examples of where it's been a success story and what we've learned from those success stories. So why should we care about creating opportunities for people to be physically active within our communities? Well, if we look across any community in America, um, regardless of whether we're looking at age or gender or socioeconomic status or race, the one common factor seems to be people are moving less than they used to. And the most noticeable side effect of this is the size of our population has gotten larger. We have an obesity epidemic in this country and physical inactivity is one of the primary causes of that epidemic. So another reason why we should care about creating opportunities for physical activity is if we look across most communities in America, it's become increasingly more difficult to make the easy choice to be active. The psychology of human behavior tells us that if something is hard, we're less likely to do it and we're certainly less likely to maintain that behavior. There's a reason why we see fast food restaurants every time we exit off the highway. It's because they've recognized that people will make the easy choice and go to those restaurants if they're the first thing that they see. We need to take this same approach in designing opportunities for physical activity within our communities. If we can make it the easy choice, then we're much more likely to get people to make that choice and become more active. Whether it's parents that are afraid to let their children play in the neighborhood or walk to school or they can't afford to enroll them in the local youth sports programs or it's people that just don't have any way to get to the places where they can be physically active. It's become hard to be physically active in this country. That's why this strategy of trying to create opportunities by sharing facilities and spaces in the community has a real opportunity to make physical activity the easy choice. So how do we create more physical activity opportunities that are easy for people to do? Well, it's really based on three things. Um, it needs to be accessible, it needs to be affordable, and it needs to be safe. And when we think about those three criteria, one of the first places that comes to mind in most communities are schools. They're typically centrally located, they're safe places, and they have the facilities and equipment designed to help people to become physically active. Historically, schools have served as anchors within our community where people went to or stayed at for physical activity after the school day was over. However, as time has gone on, schools have become far more restrictive in allowing people access to their facilities for a variety of reasons. But what has resulted, again, has been that people don't have easy access to places and spaces where they can be physically active. Additionally, research has shown us is that when we look at these spaces after the school day ends on weekends and during the summer, that these spaces that are designed for physical activity, the, the athletic fields, the ball fields, the open spaces, they're empty. They're not being used to their capacity. Okay, I want to tell a brief story here. Um, uh, what I call a tale of two athletic fields that I think will really resonate particularly among parents that have spent a lot of time driving their kids to and from um, uh, their activities, their sport activities or whatever activities that might be. Um, we're standing here at a middle school. Uh, it's actually the middle school where, uh, where my kids went to and this is the, the field predominantly used for football and soccer for, for the sports for the teams here. And my son played on the lacrosse team for this school. Now lacrosse wasn't a uh, varsity sport, I guess is probably the best way to describe it. It was a club sport, but it was the lacrosse team for this middle school. So um, during the lacrosse season, quite often I'd have to leave work um, early to go pick up my son from lacrosse practice. And you would think that I would come to this beautiful field here to pick him up. But in fact, they never practiced on this field. Um, 
They practice on another field about a mile away from here, and that got to be really frustrating to me. I mean, you can tell by looking at this field here, it's, it's beautifully maintained. Um, what you're seeing today in terms of the amount of people out here, which is zero, is typically what this field looks like. I drove past this field every day going to and from work for years and aside from the very few times when they had football practice, soccer practice or or games, this field sits empty. So this is exactly what I'm what I was talking about earlier. We have these facilities right in the center of a community. There's there's residential neighborhoods all around us here. This place should be used all the time. We should see people out here walking and playing, but I can tell you over the years, I've never seen anyone other than the sponsored activities from the school being played on this facility. All right, so now we're here over at this other facility that I was talking about where my son actually had his lacrosse practices. Now, it's not that far from the other facility and it wasn't that big a deal for me to have to come over here and pick him up, but it was just a real source of frustration for me that that beautiful field over there was sitting empty, wasn't being used, and he had to come over here for practice. The other part about this field is it's not maintained by any public entity. Parks and Rec doesn't own it and run it. The school system doesn't own it and run it. It's actually a private corporation that leases it out to a local sport club that runs programs and services on it. And it's, I mean, it's okay, but there's potholes through it. It's not a particularly safe field. I wouldn't call it a safe field. There's parking for people to come and park. But but the problem is that this has become a primary space for programmed activities like lacrosse going on behind me while that facility we just came from is sitting empty. And it should be the opposite. We should be using those facilities first and then using this as spillover for additional programs when those other spaces are already booked up. So this is what we're gonna to try to work through through this training. We're gonna to try to walk you through the steps on, on how you can try to eliminate frustrations like this, move through the barriers and create opportunities for sharing facilities within your community.